Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Welcome and thank you for joining our Power BI webinar today. Today, uh, we have the pleasure of hearing Leila Atati. Is that how you say it, uh, Leila? Is it Atati? Yes, that's correct. Excellent. Thank you. You know, I always try and be respectful with uh, people's last names. <laughs> Layla is one of my favourite women in tech, as most people know, and today she's going to be teaching us about creating automated form processing applications with AI Builder and um, Power Automate. Layla is with a great company called Radicad, and she is a data platform and AI MVP. She's a big deal. She's super smart. We love her, and I cannot wait for your webinar. Thank you so much, Leila, for helping us with this today. Oh, thank you. It's, it's my pleasure always to present uh, uh, for the Microsoft uh, Power BI team. So uh, thanks so much, Kelly. So uh, as uh, Kelly mentioned, I'm Leila. I'm based in New Zealand, Auckland. So now it's about 6 a.m. in the actually the next day. <laughs> so uh, here is uh, uh, Wednesday actually. So uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, doing the form processing uh, on uh, actually using that. So before uh, first, let me go through the what we have about the uh, doing the AI in Microsoft uh, Power Automate and Power Apps and actually how we can use them in combined with Power BI. Before June 2019, if you want to create the application with Microsoft Power Apps, that's actually a self and low code, no code tools for creating a smart application. Uh, so you can combine it with a uh, cognitive services, Microsoft cognitive services to create. So these are the applications that I'm created. So as you see that I create a computer vision that's uh, able to do the image tagging. Uh, and able to take a picture from a sense and mention that what it can see in the picture. So this is my dog. As you see here, I can uh, identify some object like a dog, outdoor is a sitting animal and the other thing. And also it's provide a, a text for me that a dog looking at the corner. So that's something. Or another one was a face recognition. So again, I combine cognitive services, face API with a uh, power apps and Microsoft flow to create a face API. So it's able to detect the age of people, uh, the people emotion, their gender, their hair color and the other things. And the last one was a computer vision that actually uh, is part of the OCR. So all of these tools is actually uh, to create them. I need to actually first create a Microsoft Power Apps. Then I need to use Microsoft Power Automate. At that time we call it uh, Flow. So to create that, it's, I'm not saying it's a hard process, but it takes time. I need to connect uh, my cognitive services. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's a bit tricky to set it up. I need to get a new API key for that and use some of the component here. But uh, actually after that, after 2019, something changed. So the changes that actually uh, we have in from 2019 was about AI Builder. Many of you heard about AI Builder. It actually is a component for the uh, embracing and having AI inside Microsoft Power Apps and Microsoft Power Automate. So uh, before that, I need to actually back to the uh, actually to the cognitive services website as you see here. I need to go to find the uh, service that I want, for example, Vision, and then I'm going there, get the API key from there. So it's a really long process and I need to pay for if I want to do actually for the longer one. But now these days with combination of the AI builder with cognitive services, uh, you, uh, you do not need to actually pay extra and do lots of more coding to connect your cognitive services with apps and power automate. Uh, one of my good friend Eric Sowa that's actually created a really nice chart uh, about the AI builder. I know it's a bit outdated. It's back to the 4th of November. Definitely has a more updated one. I need to get it from him. But it actually shows you the what features we have in AI builder. So you can do prediction. You can do form processing, object detection, and some of them are available in Power Automate uh, and also in Power Apps or in CDS and in different 
region. So I will definitely share the slides uh, there so you can actually access that. Also check out his profile. He definitely has the image over there. So uh, these are the main list that we can do that. These are the main list that uh, of the AI builder tools that we have over there. So for example, we can do text classification. So what is text classification? Text classification is back to the, for example, you are an insurance company, you get lots of insurance claim these days because of the coronavirus, maybe we face lots of interaction with the insurance companies and people want to uh, kind of claim their insurance. So uh, based on the uh, labels that we have, for example, for insurance, for vehicle insurance, for company or content. So uh, text classifier are able to find that which document is related to which group. So it's actually help you to classify your text. Or another one that we have is object detection. For example, in this example, you can see I have three type of the green tea, one of rose, cinnamon, cinnamon and mint. And using the object detection, I'm able to identify which of them is rose, cinnamon and the other. So I'm training with these different images in a different situation with a different color. And after that is able to detect each of those tea. Another service that we have is text analytics. So we have text analysis already in Power BI. That's for sentiment, keyword extraction and language detection. So now here also we have that one. So and also form processing. So I'm not going to show all of them. That's a big list. I'm going to show you the uh, form processing one. But before that, to access to the uh, AI Builder, you need to go to the Power Apps, a Power Apps that actually access to the AI Builder feature. So if you're going there and logging through that, you should see there is a sign here. You see the AI Builder. I click on that. I have two options. I have builds and existing model. I'm going through the build that actually shows me the list of the AI Builder module that I have here. So from form processing that I'm going to talk about that very soon, object detection, prediction that we already have it in Power BI service, uh, text classification, uh, a really interesting one, business card reader. I actually use it uh, uh, when we're going for a conference or think people exchange a, a business card. I actually have an application that I can take a picture of that business card and is automatically going to add to my Outlook. So I easily I get the information from people uh, and different things, keyword, language, sentiment analysis and text recognition. So we are going to talk about form processing. So the process that I'm going to talk is actually one of our internal projects for organizing a conference. And that was about the time we ran Sickle Saturday in New Zealand, in Auckland, in 10th of August 2019. I found that people uh, are not really interested to uh, fill out the online form, or it's very hard to share the link with them. They couldn't find it. So we go for a paper version. We, we put some of the paper in this format. It's a bit different friend that time, but this is kind of the same things. And we put that in the each room and people uh, start to write it. A session title, speaker name and what they learned from the session. And as you see, it was handwritten. So the process that I'm using the AI builder was to actually scan all of that evaluation using the very good quality scanner and I put it into the OneDrive. And then I use the Power Automate uh, and also AI Builder combination to each other. So automatically in a uh, kind of the any action, any time a new picture will add it to the OneDrive. Uh, AI Builder apply to that picture and extract the information from them and back it to the another folder that was Result. So this is a really good automation process with a combination of the AI builder and using the AI that process. And finally, I use Power BI the, and Power Query to actually to clean the results there uh, through that process. So I'm going to show you the process here. So first of all, uh, what we need to do, we need to back to the um, AI Builder. I'm going to click on Form Processing. So to start, you see that there are some hints here. I totally recommend 
to check out the hint. So uh, this actually provides the best practice. One of the best practice is they use the document with the same layout. So this is my uh, actually sample form that I have. So all of them has the same layout. That means that all of them, for example, has a field, has three fields, session title, name, and what people learn. So this is the first hint that we need to actually to consider. Another one is about the use simple document. Uh, still, uh, still we need to kind of stick with the simple documents and we shouldn't go for a very complex one with a complex table. And uh, there was another one. Uh, yep, use document with primarily text. So uh, don't use document with lots of images or checkbox. I know that the uh, because this service use cognitive services. So if you just in the Google, just search for Microsoft cognitive is. And if you go through the uh, vision, uh, we have a, a form recognizer. So behind the scene is actually is using this service. This service, I know that start to actually to detect the checkbox and the other things. Some of the checkbox is recognized, but it's still in uh, Power Apps is not applicable, so it comes soon. I'm I'm saying that if it's not uh, check it that one, but it's uh, definitely is come soon. The other one is actually each document should be a separate file. So for example, if you have a, a PDF, so uh, it shouldn't be as a, it should be a separate PDF file or separate image file. It shouldn't be attached to each other. So this is all good. I'm going to create a one. So AI build form processing. I'm going to create that one. It's better to be and I'm going to create that one. So the first step that is going to ask me is to uh, train the model. So behind the scene, there is a model. The model is actually uh, need some data, need some images or PDF file to be trained. So that's why here is asking me about add, uh, actually uh, add document. I'm going, you can, load it from your SharePoint, from your blob storage. I'm going to load it from my local PC. So these are the documents. I get them. I upload all six documents here. Let's take a while. And uh, so it's actually behind the scene. There is a machine learning. There is a module that needs data that to be personalized for your form. It needs to actually uh, you need to train it. So at the bottom of the page, I click on analyze. It's going to analyze my form and extract the field that it has in each form. So it's going to analyze my form to detect the uh, items that I have there. It's take a few minutes most of the time, but uh, because it's a very simple one is actually work. So uh, the best practice for this process is to use different handwritten. So uh, in my scenario, if you look at here, you see that it's kind of mine. All of them are mine handwritten, so I totally recommend to try different handwritten and you see that it's not a really good uh, handwriting. So you see this has some, for example, it's not, not really clear, but you will see that this is really enough good to detect all of the actually sentence over there. Back here. Okay, so it's actually analyze my, so I'm going to click on that. So as you see here, is able to detect the some of the information. So Azure, yep, I can accept that. My name, Leila, yes, that's correct. What is notebook? So yep, kind of, so it couldn't recognize the Azure, but still I will accept that. So these are the fields that I'm happy with that. I said done. And yeah, so the training process, now we are going to the training process. So training process combined after six images, I totally recommend to have more. So as much as more pictures and different handwritten you have, the uh, algorithm behind the scene works better. So I'm asked to kind of 
training and going to the model. So now is actually we come from the build to the model tab on the under the AI builder in the left hand side and you will see that is actually is going to be uh, the model. I'm going to click on that and to be use it in Power Apps or Microsoft Flow, I need to uh, publish it. So I said I want to use the model. We can use it in the Power Apps or Flow. So I'm going or Power Automate. So I'm going to use it in Flow. So click on that. Uh, uh, I'm I'm sure that some of them. So there are three options actually in Power Automate or Power Apps or CDS. Uh, I think that the CDS one also should coming soon. I don't know one, but I uh, I think so. It should be come very soon. So this is my. Uh, Power Automate. So from Power Apps, I create a model here. If you look at the model, my model already here. Uh, AI build form processing is here and is already actually there. I need to also publish it. Just let me see that if it's published or not. Yes, let me publish it first. So I'm going to publish and then use it into the other one. Also, you can do a quick check here to make sure that this is the one that you need. So uh, this is a done. So we create a model here. We create a model uh, of our power apps and is a form processing. We train it based on the forms that we have. So now we can actually use the model in other one. I'm going to uh, use the model inside flow. So just make sure you're doing that. So now I'm going to the solution and there is another way to not use the solution in Power AI Builder uh, in Power Automate, but I use the classic one. I already created the AI uh, Builder solution here and I'm going to kind of create a flow. So I'm going to click on the flow. So back to the process that I have, let me back to the process that what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a uh, actually I'm going to create a flow that whenever a file, whenever a picture, a new images uh, has been loaded to the OneDrive uh, from that form. So whenever a form in a JPG format loaded to the form processing uh, to the sorry OneDrive, then the AI builder will be apply on that and then is going to store it back to the same location or another location. So we are going to see that how it actually work. So we are going to doing the process. So uh, first trigger when a file is created. So I'm going to here. So I start to write so OneDrive. So the trigger is when a file is created on my OneDrive for business. Uh, just make sure you connect to your uh, OneDrive here. I, this is my OneDrive and I just uh, here you able to identify the location of your file. I just put it on the root to make it easier. In the next step, I want that to call another uh, component that is uh, predict. So predict is a component under the CDS that allows you to use your AI builder model. So I'm click on the predict. It's ask me about the model. So here you will see some of the models like this one that I myself created. So AI build form processing is the one that we created. Also, you can see some of them that is like language detection or for example, you may see text one or entity extraction or the keyword extraction. So all of them actually is there. I use the mind that is AI builder form, the one that I created. Then you need to specify what document type you have. So if you can have an image slash JPEG, JPEG uh, and also you can have an application that can be a PDF file. So we can still use a PDF file or you can use other one that is PNG or TIF image. I'm going to the, use the image and JPEG. It's done. So the document that I want to pass is something from my OneDrive. So let me put the name AI Builder Form Processing. Let me just save it to make sure I access to that. So you see that till now I didn't write any code actually. So that's why we call it kind of low code and no code process 
even for creating the machine learning process, I didn't write any code. So also here you see is everything is really manual. I'm going to now uh, to store the results to the again OneDrive for business. So again here I'm going to create a file and I'm going to put it in the same location that I have. So I'm click on the folder sign here. The file should be located on the root. In the second part, it asks me about the file name. So whenever you click here, you will access the dynamic content or expression. I'm going to write a expression here. I'm going to use a very simple command named concat that concat two string together. I'm going to write that I want to the new file has the name UTC now, that is the current time, and with the data type text. So I want to have a TXT file over there. So just that. For the other one, I want to actually uh, use again the concat function. So I'm, I'm going to use uh, the dynamic content here. So I can use the, you see that these are the fields that I can have. I have session title value that holds my one. But let's see that how it look like. Okay, so I, I just del delete that one to show you what is the process, what we get from there. So you can understand What's the process over there? So let's save it and test it for a while. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my, uh, this is my OneDrive. I'm going to import the image. Let me delete that one that I'm already have. So I'm going to actually import, uh, put an image over there and test my one. So I'm going, I want to test the trigger myself. And at the same time, I'm going to upload the file to my OneDrive. So this is my OneDrive and I'm going to test it. So uh, the uh, actually this one should start to work if I don't write anything wrong and it should give me the uh, what is able to find under the form. So the form that I'm already uh, uploaded is this one. Let me show you here. So this is a one and I'm going to see that what's the result for that. So sometimes it takes a bit time to connect for the first time and we see that. So just stop, give me a second to so we see that how it works. So this is a process of when it's running, uh, actually is a start to run, but we can actually uh, check the uh, actually, the other thing, so for example, this is a previous one that I'm created. You can see the different process failed or test one here, and you can actually use it over there. So I just back to the solution to see that. Is it running? Hope we didn't get any uh, error over there. Yep, so it's successful there. So if I back to the run here, uh, so you should see that it actually you, that's, a, that's a really exciting sign here, the green one, I'm happy, there's no error. So these are the output that you can see here. So there are many things, many things. The one that I really need to show in the output is the session title value that is Azure, and this is a confidence to identify that. The other one uh, actually is the uh, session title, the, the everything that starts with the value. So what you learn value and the other things. So these are the uh, main parts that I need. So session name, display name, or the value again can be really useful. So what I'm going to do, I'm back to the edit mode. So just back to the edit mode and I'm now going to create a new one. So I'm going to want to store back to the OneDrive. So one drive for business. Create a file, same process or because I don't this time and the uh, file name again was concat and the concat, I need the uh, UTC 
now with a type of dot txt and just that and here so now you can understand what we have here so when i going to the dynamic content you will see that i have the actually the uh, session title value and the other one so it's a long list you just need to browse so this one and you can add the other one at the end so just doing the other one and add the others i already create that one because it takes time so uh, these are the lists that i having that so i just make it a bit much more nicer so session title then the session title one, then I add some kind of make it a bit nicer to show in the output. So just going back here and going to the expression, I put it over here. Cool. So, uh, so it should be fine. Now I'm going to actually to test it uh, because I'm already tested once. So what I'm going to do, I'm just using the previous test. So when I click on test, I'm going to set use the data from previous run that was successful. And you see that what we get in the output. There are many ways to actually using JSON parser and the other to make it to make this processor nicer. But uh, this is a very just an easy way to understand. So it's already created. Let's see what we get in the OneDrive. So if I back to the OneDrive, I see, yep, yeah, uh, because I already have another flow, so I can see two flow here. And you can see this actually store back all of my information here. So for the each file is going to create a, a new actually file over there. So that makes it actually maybe good or bad. But however, if you don't like to access too many things, you can still use the power BI. So I'm going to use the Power BI. I'm going to get uh, data. And uh, click on the more. That's a folder one. I'm going to choose the folder. And the folder is under my OneDrive, which is really full now. So I'm going to the result. Yep, that's a folder that I have. And I'm going to actually, these are the data that I'm have. So I just click on transfer data. OK, so I just need this one. I remove other columns and I'm going to kind of. Yep, that's a, actually the things that I have and. Um, we are going, I'm just going to write a very uh, simple uh, one. Uh, formula over here. So I'm going to add a column at the uh, conditional column. Uh, no, sorry, just uh, create a, a custom column. Going to set um, text to binary if I'm correct. Just put it there. Just click on that. Oops, I made the, maybe I need to. Uh, just a minute, so create a custom column. Um, text. Binary to text or text to binary. Let me double check the code that I have. Maybe I missed some part. Second. So you can actually do the data processing here. You just need to convert your uh, actually your uh, binary to the value here, creating a new one. So uh, just give me a second to find the uh, actually the JSON file with power query. Just a minute. So any question on the board till I'm checking that? Is anything over there or? We don't have any questions, Leila. No, no. Okay, cool. So. Okay, so just let me write that one. Okay, yeah, text from binary. Sorry, I just make a mistake. Text 
from binary. Uh, yep, that's a from binary. And then I put the content here. And it should, yep. So that's the one. So I don't need this one. And this is actually all of the things that I have there. So this is Power Query. So you can do anything that you want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the split by delimiter and I'm going to set each occurrence of the column. Just make sure to change them. I don't need this one. So you can just uh, kind of uh, do lots of data transformation here. You can just split. I can say lift most one. So this one becomes session title. And I don't need this one also. Just remove that. This one again, I can split uh, based on the comma that I have. And it becomes speaker name. I don't need that one. And this one become what people learn. So it's actually so from that process, from the very from the written form, actually I come up with a uh, kind of I come up with this one so I can show the report or whatever. If there is a number about the rating, people do that. So you can actually uh, bring it over here so you see that how is actually this is easy to do the form processing i try to put all of the step that i done so from the uh, concat and all of the formula and the actually all of the process over here so this is a very practical example of that and you see that how actually you can use the form processing for uh, actually extracting the data and see that how is actually work so uh, i think then I just done this demo in 30 minutes without write that much code. I think the only code that I was is just a code in the Power Query that was the text from binary one. The other was not really complex code. So back to the Power Apps, if I back to the Power Apps, I totally recommend to check the other models that we have. Some of them can be really useful. For example, uh, the one that actually is really interesting for me, that's actually is recently, one is a text recognition and is really actually really accurate. So to create that one, that's uh, kind of uh, a bit different. So if I back to the previous example that I have here. So uh, I use actually the OCR one here. I wrote lots of code to access to that. Let me see if I have it here. No here but actually this one is uh, able to extract the pictures uh, the text in the pictures there so you see that mvp 2019 you can see here but this one is actually you don't need to write any code you're just able to use it so i said i want to use it in the app for example is able to extract all of the things that it can see in the picture. So what I'm saying that because sometimes you don't have the proper uh, actually form there. You have a specific image, but still you want to extract the text from the uh, images that you have. So this is another one, but it's not a form processing. It's able to just extract the text in the images. So just wait a minute. So it's come. Just show it short. It's not the end to end demo, just, a, uh, just to show the possibility. But uh, I wrote a blog post about that, uh, about end to end process that you can actually see that. So is it, you see that there's a component name, named text recognizer, that actually you can use it over there. Uh, just take a bit second, a bit slow internet. Yeah, it's coming. So you see that it actually give me something like this and I'm uh, let me run it. So I'm going to kind of bring a picture from my local one. So I'm going to put a, for example. Let me put my business card, for example. So it's actually I just an image of my business card and you will see that if I hover my mouse is able to detect the process here. So I'm going to actually insert the, for example, label here. 
and I'm going to say I want to see the text. Recognizer. For example, selected text. And I'm going to run it. And let me bring another picture like uh, my driving license, maybe. And if I click on the each part, you see that is able to detect more. So this is another one uh, and is quite accurate. You see, it's quite accurate to detect even they are, they are not really good quality image, but it still is able to detect that one. So that's another one. So I totally recommend to check it out. All of these things over there. Some of these feature already available also in Power BI, some of them uh, here. So you can use Power BI, Power Automate, and other ones to use these features. So I wrote some of the blog posts. These are the link to the videos and the blog posts, and there are lots of information in Microsoft blog. I totally recommend to, che to check them out. And if you have any question, this is my email and this is my Twitter handle. So I, I really appreciate if you have any comments, if you're using these tools, you have any feedback, uh, I really appreciate that. So, yeah, this is all good from me. Any questions so far? Uh, no questions today. Cool. No questions today, yeah. Awesome. So, Thanks. yeah, that's all good. So, it's from me. And thanks so much. That's I hope that. Uh, people enjoy it and uh, I even I know that some some of you maybe watch it online so I really appreciate just back to me after that I just put it on the my screen for the email so everyone can see the email and yeah. thanks so much Kelly and uh, Deepak for the opportunity Layla thank you that was exceptional as usual um, we really look forward to going through and putting all of those AI um, uh, tips, tricks, and best practices into play. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Same. <laughs> and, thank, and thanks, Deepak, again. And my name is Kelly Kay from uh, Power BI, and we thank you for joining us today.